Here are some examples of adaptations. First, the Texas Blind Salamander. The Texas Blind Salamander lives in underwater caves in the aquifer and springs that feed water to the headwaters and streams in the upper reaches of the Guadalupe River. Because it lives its life totally in the dark, it has no eyes. It has smooth, unpigmented skin. It gets oxygen from small gills that look much like feathers attached along its side just behind its head. The salamanders are about three to four inches in length. Next, the orange throat darter. Only about an inch and a half long, orange throat darters live in the headwaters and streams. They remain near the bottom or among rocks and other hiding places where they dart about in fast flowing water and in the small pools formed in springs and streams. They're well adapted to hugging the bottom when streams flood and flows increase because most darter species lack a swim bladder which is present in most freshwater fish. Next is Guadalupe bass. Guadalupe bass live in rivers and streams of the Brazos, Guadalupe, Colorado, Nueces, and San Antonio River basins in Texas. They're adapted to life in small streams and may grow to about a foot and a half long. They eat insects, crayfish, and small fish. The Guadalupe bass is the official Texas state freshwater fish and only lives in Texas. They're currently listed as a threatened species due to habitat degradation and interbreeding with stock smallmouth bass. They are the focus of restoration efforts by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Blue catfish. Blue catfish are opportunistic predators and scavengers that feed along the bottom of reservoirs or large rivers feeding on fish, crustaceans, insects, and mollusks, and dead or alive. They'll even eat some plant matter, but as they grow, they feed more and more on live fish. They depend on barbels or whiskers with many taste buds, and they have a good sense of smell to guide them to food, even in dark, muddy waters. In fact, catfish don't really have scales. They have chemoreceptors all over their skin so they can taste food even before taking it into their mouths. River food. This turtle is often seen on river banks or logs basking in the sun. It can grow to a length of about a foot and eats aquatic plants, grasses, and algae. Large webbed feet make the river cooter an excellent swimmer capable of negotiating moder moderately strong river currents. Largemouth bass. Largemouth bass live in reservoirs, wetlands, and large rivers where waters are slow moving. They're predators, meaning that they eat other animals, which are called prey. Their large mouths avail enable them to catch frogs, fish, crayfish, and other animals, including smaller largemouth bass. Their broad fins and strong, heavy bodies allow them to go in any direction, even backwards. They can move quickly for short distances to capture their food. American alligator. American alligators are reptiles that can be found in freshwater wetlands and brackish waters of Texas. They can grow to more than 12 feet long and have large, powerful tails that allow them to move swiftly in the water to catch prey, such as fish, turtles, small mammals, birds, and even other alligators. They often can be seen floating just below the water surface with only their eyes and snout poking out from the water. Placement of their eyes and nostrils is an adaptation to life in the water that allows them to breathe air and see around them while staying submerged and hidden. Mallards and roseate spoonbills. Waterfowl are ducks, geese, and swans. They're adapted for swimming with webbed feet and for floating on the water surface as well as diving for short distances underwater. Other water birds, like the roseate spoonbill, are adapted for wading in water with long, thin legs. Many also have long beaks that they dip into the water to pick food items off the bottom of shallow streams, ponds, and estuaries. Eastern oyster. Oysters live in estuaries and bays, feeding on plankton by using their gills to filter tiny food particles out of the water. 
At two weeks of age, oyster larvae, each about the size of a grain of pepper, these oyster larvae settle onto objects to which they attach with cement-like glue. At this stage, they are called spat. They begin a complete metamorphosis process to build their shell and spend the rest of their life in this one place. Oysters have been found attached to bricks, boats, cans, tires, bottles, crabs, and even turtles. They usually attach to other oysters. So when a large number of oysters join together, we call it an oyster reef. Over 300 different marine aquatic species have been found to use oyster reefs for their habitat, refuge, and food. Red drum. Red drum, also called redfish, live in shallow brackish waters about one to four feet deep. This is along the edges of bays and around submerged vegetation, such as seagrasses. This is when they are young. They're also commonly found around oyster reefs and around soft mud along jetties and pier pilings. They sometimes are in water so shallow that their backs are exposed while swimming. They can live in fresh water, but when they're about three to six years old, they move out of the estuaries and into the deeper waters of the Gulf of Mexico, where they can live entirely in salt water. Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle. One of five sea turtle species found in the Gulf waters of Texas, the Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle is an endangered species. They can grow to 32 inches long and weigh as much as 100 pounds. Sea turtles' feet are formed as flippers, allowing them to swim through the water. These turtles lay eggs along the Texas beaches. Once hatch, the young turtles make their way across the beach and into the Gulf of Mexico where they spend the rest of their lives. Although they live in the ocean, turtles do not have gills, so they must come to the surface to breathe. Bottlenose dolphin. Bottlenose dolphins are mammals that breathe air and live their entire lives in water. They're often seen in Texas bays and passes to the Gulf of Mexico. They travel alone or in small groups called pods. They feed on fish and mollusks with mullet, the main food in Texas bays. They find food using sound waves in a process called echolocation. 